welcome back. This week we're looking for a Regency townhouse in Cheltenham with a budget of 450,000. Now, you may have noticed that's not a Regency townhouse. In an actual fact, we're eight miles from Cheltenham. Kirsty, what are we doing here? You know what it's like in our job. You get a list of criteria from a client and then you find something which doesn't seem to bear much relationship to those criteria and yet you feel in your gut that it might be worth showing to them. And this is one of those houses. Yesterday, Ian saw a spacious Regency terrace with a good flat to rent out, but in the wrong location for him. A contemporary development with secure parking and a stunning flat. Right area, but traffic noise concerned him. A detached Victorian villa with no flat, but plenty of potential. And a huge historic home, right area, but wrong corner for Ian. So we've decided to go for broke on this location issue and leave the town behind. If Ian's up for village life, idyllic Deerhurst will be hard to beat. This barn conversion has four bedrooms and is in the middle of the countryside. It's on the market at £445,000 and it's got the space to create a separate flat to rent to James. The accommodation is upside down, with the open plan reception rooms on the first floor. Now, Ian. Oh, wow. That is amazing. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? It's You've incredible. Got views there, views there, views there. The other reception room, equally large, is currently a dining room. I mean, if you wanted to be super, super kind, obviously, you could give James that one, put a kitchen in there, and have this as a sitting room kitchen. I'm renowned for being kind, but not, not that, that kind. kind. <laughs> Now this no. is this is something that I shouldn't show you because it'll probably go with the vendor. But it's a wooden water trough and every time he has a party, he fills it with ice and bungs oh. the bottles in. Oh. Isn't that good? <laughs> oh wow. The kitchen's tucked behind screens at the far end. It's full of character, isn't it? It is. Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. Eight miles from Cheltenham, huh? Yeah, well, in my car that wouldn't take that long. True. This house is incredibly seductive, and part of that is the furniture and the objects and what we know about the lifestyle of the vendor. Some houses are like film sets. When you strip away the props, there's just nothing there. But here, there are some things which are going to stay. The beams, the brick, and of course the view, which is what it's really all about. There are a number of little cracks and damaged brickwork that might worry us if this was a Regency house in Cheltenham but this dates from the early 17th century. A converted barn, and they kind of add to the character and feel of the place. There's nothing here that would overly worry me. I would say, though, if you're considering buying one of these, I'd always recommend having a full structural survey. Much better to spend a 1,000 than regret spending half a million. The four bedrooms are on the ground floor. As there are two front doors, creating a separate flat wouldn't be difficult. These are. Just partition walls. I mean, it's a morning's work to, to change the entire shape of this back half. Yeah, the question really is whether James would live in the countryside or not. You weren't very keen on living in the country, though. That's fair, that's fair. I know, and I must admit, this has changed my mind. I've always had it in the back of my mind I'd move to the country. I just thought I was a little bit young. But it is a, a beautiful house, and Cheltenham's not that far. Would you buy it? Quite possibly. Wow, what a turnaround. But before Ian puts the down payment on his green wellies, we've had an interesting call about another house in town that's just come on the market. It's in a Regency Square where Ian's always dreamed of living. This house in Clarence Square has four bedrooms and four reception rooms, but no flat for rental, despite an asking price way over budget at £550,000. If you say to us, no, we'll walk away, can you stretch to five fifty? I could stretch to somewhere close to that, and for the right house in the right location, I would. Right, good. Then we'll go in and have a look. Brilliant. Ian seems to love it before he's even seen it. We haven't seen it, so it's a bit of a blind date, this one. It's a hundred grand over his budget. I don't know. What's it like? <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's everything I'd hoped it would be so far. I shouldn't say that in the first room I walk into. Look at the into, matching but... fireplaces. Shutters? Working mm. shutters. Wow, oh, look at that. Different sides of the square are very different. Yeah. There's a through road on one side of the square, which makes it a much less desirable place to live. And this is sort of the best side of the square. It's the quietest, and that's south-facing. A bit more expensive, this side. 
always has been. I'm dying to go on. Let's Keep exploring. Oh, lovely bathroom. That's absolutely huge. No oh, and the first floor drawing room. Oh, wow. Oh, this is a joy. Superb. Stunning views. Very nice to come up here after dinner with a cup of coffee, watch a bit of telly, and then just go next door to your bedroom. You've got it all worked out. All I know this is worrying. Kirsty's moved me in already. There were two more bedrooms and another bathroom on the second floor and a decent kitchen in the basement, which would be the obvious place to create a separate rental flat. What's on your mind, Ian? Well, obviously, my mind's working overtime because at this price, even for less, I have to have somewhere I can rent. But gut feeling, lovely house, fabulous location, really nice feel, I feel real at home here. It's just whether I can make it work financially. So, after two days of house hunting, we head back to Ian's own flat to take stock. Deerhurst was the real surprise, I must admit. I didn't think that I could see myself living in the country yet. But that house, wow. I even looked into taxi fares mm -hmm. to get out there. But when it comes down to it, I'm not sure that I actually could make that leap out there. I think after a couple of weeks, I might, might be sitting there sort of drumming my fingers on the table, wondering what to do with myself. No, I mean, I deliberated long and hard about this, and I think I should go back and have a look at Portland Street yep. and see if I can just get over that slight location issue yeah. and absolutely go and have a look at Clarence Square and see if I can um, make my finances fit. So, day three, first up, Portland Street and the Regency Terrace, comfortably within Ian's budget. Would-be tenant James has joined us for a closer look. Now, James, I don't know whether it's a bit cruel showing you the upstairs because you're going to be downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see what's upstairs. Where though. you will stay. <laughs> Not the servants quarters. <laughs> there has been some um, remedial work going on up here. Oh, you yes. can see the change of yeah. colour there. Yeah. Uh, I suspect there was damp under the rendering and they've redone it. it it's definitely been fixed. Not something to overly worry about, but perhaps yeah. point it out to us if I get some gen on it. You should always make a list of things that you want your surveyor to double check. Don't assume he'll see what you see. There are fewer period features than Ian said he wanted, but the contemporary feel has made quite an impact. The off-road parking is clearly a bonus, but can he come to terms with the busy road? I mean, this house is growing on me, I have to say. The I only, know. I mean, the only fly in the ointment is that. And what does James make of the flat? I'd live here. It's, it's contemporary. It's what I like. It's nice and clean, nice brick space. Um, kitchen is excellent. It's a really good kitchen. <laughs> it's yeah, I love cooking, so... We've got a ready, willing and able tenant, yeah. so we're down to the question of money. Yeah. I'd probably say about six, six fifty. You think for this, for yeah. a one-bedroom flat? Yeah, for this. That's a lot for Cheltenham for a one bedroom mm. flat. For this, for this. Fine. For Don't this. say a word because I have a feeling that's way over the market rate. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> on the whole, the flat is well finished, but there are still one or two minor problems. There's a puddle on the floor here which is caused by a leaking radiator. It's probably only a teething problem with the new heating system. If you're buying a developed property, you're paying for it. So make a snagging list and make sure these problems are sorted out before you exchange, not after. So back to that over-budget house at Clarence Square. It's £150,000 more expensive and there's no separate flat to rent out. The house is vast, three reception rooms, four bedrooms, two bathrooms and an impressive study. There's rear access too, which could give secure off-road parking. With the relevant permissions, we think Ian could create a basement flat. He could move the existing kitchen upstairs and then install a new kitchen in what is now the utility room and a new bathroom. And James's verdict? Not really fond of space. Don't like this space. Why, why not? Just doesn't gel with me, doesn't feel comfortable. I look at yeah. the standard of the other flat, and that's the standard I've been looking for. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I come yeah. in then, as the person with the purse strings, is what is that so, going to cost? We reckon £5,000 would cover a basic conversion, but to get it up to the standard of Portland Street would cost a great deal more. So, a tricky one for Ian, but what would his £450,000 budget get him elsewhere? A three-bedroom news house in Charlton St Giles. A huge five-bedroom semi in Harrogate. Or a six-bedroom house plus a flat and two acres near Cork. But if Ian wants his dream home in Clarence Square, he's clearly going to have to stretch that budget to breaking point. Portland Street, on the other hand, seems a safe bet. It's back to Ian's current flat and out with the calculator. Portland Street ticks most of the boxes and superficially would be a perfect house for me. 
but I'm looking for a house that I'm going to live in for the next 10 or 15 years. And I have a feeling that if I did live there, I'd be getting itchy feet after five years or so and wanting to move. The idea of moving now was to get myself as far up the property ladder as I could possibly afford to find a house I'd be comfortable in for a long time. And for that reason, I think Clarence Square is actually the perfect house for me. How much could you go to on that house? On that house, bearing in mind all the other work, 510. That's well below the asking price, so it's vital Ian strengthens his offer in other ways. It often happens that it's not the person with the most amount of money that wins a property, but the one who can move most swiftly and follow through most effectively. And how are you going to swing all this with James? One last question. Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Getting very drunk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then bully him. Right, Usually okay. Works. <laughs> so did Ian get his dream home? I put in a sporting offer of 510,000 on the house in Clarence Square. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to swing it. But the good news is another house has just come on the market in the square. Uh, it's got four bedrooms and a separate two bedroom flat. They wanted 450,000 for it. And I've just heard this evening they've accepted my offer. So I'm really excited. I've got a house in the square I wanted and I just can't wait to move now.